Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Raw Thoughts. But before we get into the news about Microsoft and NVIDIA, I saw a lot of comments yesterday about not showing the yogurt. So didn't want you guys to think I wasn't still on the yogurt kick. Different flavor, peach. Let's take a sip and get into it. This stuff is delicious, by the way. I don't know why you guys make fun of me about it. It is absolutely delicious. So really big news. Microsoft Azure deployed first large-scale cluster of NVIDIA GB300s for OpenAI workloads. This just got announced. And I'm going to read a few quotes pertaining to this as this is, once again, more than 4,600 Blackwell Ultra GPUs were connected with the Quantum X800 networking platform by Microsoft. Satya Nadella said, first of many as we scale to hundreds of thousands of GB300s across our DC's data centers and rethink every layer of the stack across silicon systems and software to support next-gen AI workloads. Then NVIDIA's Vice President of Hyperscale and High Performance Com Computing, Ian Buck said, this co-engineered system delivers the world's first at scale GB300 production cluster, providing the supercomputer engine needed for OpenAI to serve multi-trillion parameter models. Pretty interesting. Then another quote from Microsoft Azure Vice President of AI Infrastructure, Nidhi Chapel, maybe I mispronounced that, apologize if I did, quote, our collaboration helps ensure customers like OpenAI can deploy next generation infrastructure at unprecedented scale and speed. And then some more information is showing the system provides 37, 37 terabytes of fast memory and 1.44 exaflops of FP4 tensor core performance per VM. I'm going to assume that's virtual machine, creating a large unified memory space needed for reasoning models, agentic AI systems, and multi-model generative AI. So before I give you the raw thoughts on that, I want to get into the NVIDIA news. The U.S. just approved NVIDIA chip exports, the UAE, in a bilateral AI deal. And when I look through this, it looks like they are talking about billions of dollars worth of NVIDIA AI chip exports, which once again is huge. Part of the information is showing that in exchange, the UAE has pledged to match chip imports with an equivalent level of investment in the U.S., part of a broader promise to invest $1.4 trillion over the next decade. So why is all this important? A lot of AI news in the past couple of weeks, a lot of data center news, but it goes back to show you about what I cited when Microsoft generated the news release with their next generation data center in Wisconsin, $4 billion. And that came on top of either a 3.4 or 3.6 billion investment already for a first data center in Wisconsin. That's not even built yet. So the fact that they just deployed 4,600 Blackwell Ultra GPUs and they're saying, quote, first of many as we scale to hundreds of thousands of GB300s across their data centers. I cannot be more bullish on NVIDIA very bullish on AMD, even though that's a sore spot for me, very bullish on Taiwan Semi and other companies across the semiconductor infrastructure. This news is very bullish because it just goes to show you that the spend is not stopping. It is October 9th. We have three weeks until the big four report earnings. That usually happens last week of October, first week of November. I am very interested to see how Meta, Amazon, and Alphabet respond. In my mind, there is a real prisoner's dilemma here. I cannot see how they cannot come over the top. 
I cannot see how they're going to let Microsoft run away with this. And if we go back to the news yesterday, the deal with OpenAI not only allows them to continue getting their compute from third parties, this is the first time they will be able to buy chips owned and operated by OpenAI. So they're going to be getting compute from Microsoft, they're going to get it from CoreWeave, and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in data centers. They did a 10 gigawatt deal with NVIDIA. They did a six gigawatt deal with AMD. And I think the TAM is going to increase. I really do. I don't think that we're factoring in enough when it comes to robotics, when it comes to full self-driving, when it comes to humanoid robotics, when it comes to agentic AI, and when it comes to just the sheer scale of what we're going to need for compute. So very bullish. I think Q3 earnings are going to be strong. And I think that we're going to really see a pickup in CapEx spending. And it's going to be interesting to see what the bears try to spin because I'm not seeing the bear case. I try to be very objective. Sure, CapEx could slow down. If it does, that could certainly cause the market to retrace or technology to retrace, which in fact would cause the market to retrace most likely because it's the largest component of the NASDAQ and S&P 500. I'm not seeing evidence from the numbers that that's happening. So we'll see. Q3 earnings are around the corner. Can't wait. Come at you with another episode soon. And because a lot of people are requesting a deep dive on the energy companies, I will be putting that together and I will be making some graphs and charts and go over where I think there's going to be an expansion and where I think there's opportunities for the future. So for more, re for more video ideas, leave a request and I'll try to make everything that comes in. Talk to everybody later. Good night.